Hello, happy Monday. I am Jessica Hicks. I am going to be keeping this video pretty short, but wanted to spend some time talking about the gender pay gap. So I am going to take one minute just to get my notes here, and then we're going to have a discussion not so much about the statistics and why is there a pay you know, gap between genders. However, we're going to focus on more of you know, what are some things that women can do to bridge the gap themselves. So give me just one moment. Okay, so this should be a good discussion. Hopefully you all can hear me. Hello, this is LaTanya on YouTube. Hello, how are you? Hi, Edward. Uh, nice to see you here. So there's basically three main buckets that I'm going to talk about. And these suggestions are coming from a place of one, me being a black woman and um, doing certain things myself, learning things along the way, making mistakes as well as uh, talking with people in the human resources industry, uh, spending time as a corporate recruiter as well, talking with candidates directly, seeing different tactics used by men versus women that I have seen myself and things that I've also used myself as well. So again, hopefully everyone can hear me. This little Tanya, if you could just put a little comment in the chat section, if you can hear me. Edward, I see you out there as well. If you can give me a little comment just to make sure that my audio and everything is okay. Let me actually move this around so it's closer to me. Okay, hopefully you can hear me better. So anyway, this is coming from a place of personal experience as well as things I've seen, seen in the industry from men and women. And also tactics that I have used myself within salary negotiation, just being knowledgeable and such. I'll give it a little minute here. Just want to make sure my audio is good. And if you're seeing me on LinkedIn, I am broadcasting from LinkedIn, YouTube, and Twitch. So I may not look at the comments immediately on LinkedIn, but I will see them later. And actually, let me just pull up LinkedIn real quick so I can see what's going on there. Also. All right, so I'll just jump right into it. So. Um, I'm hoping folks can hear me. I'm not seeing any comments that anyone can't hear me, but if that is happening, just let me know. So the first thing that I thought of when I just thought about, you know, gender pay, I want to discuss things that we can change, not things like, you know, focus on STEM careers, focus on, uh, you know, things that you may not necessarily be able to change. If you're in the human resources field, no, that's not a part of the STEM world where there's higher pay, but there is an imbalance just based on different industries that someone is in. And generally, the areas that women have been in it have strayed away from science and technology and engineering and medicine. So that is a big piece of the puzzle. But I'm not talking about those things. You, I'm not telling anyone they need to go back to school, but these should be some tactics that no matter what industry you're in, you can use them. So the first thing that I see is a, a gap and something that I had to learn myself is doing your research. So what do I mean by doing your research? Doing your research involves really understanding the industry that you are in. So for example, I am in the human resources space, I'm in the recruiting world. And so for me, I should be able to understand what's happening in my industry, what type of skills are in demand within my field. This comes from doing direct research, just Googling things, right? But also being a part of different networks, being a part of groups within your industry, different professional groups that you can um, join within either your local area. There's also virtual groups, national groups. You should know what these groups are and connect with other people within their industry 
so that you can stay in the know on what type of trends are happening, what type of skills are in demand, what do you need to be learning upcoming, right? The next thing you need to know as a part of doing your research that also can come from being within a network, right? Connecting with people is knowing the average pay rates and knowing what pay rates change depending on what skills you have, right? So for me personally, within the recruitment world or within the human resources world, this may be, well, what type of niche sectors should I be in? Is there a difference in pay from being a technical recruiter versus being a marketing recruiter? Recruiter? Are there certain skills that are more in demand? I should know this to help me figure out, okay, how can I increase my pay? The other thing within this as well is understanding uh, alternate ways that you can increase your pay. What is the progression? What does the progression look like in the recruitment? world or whatever space you're in, whatever industry you're in, you should understand not just within your company what kind of growth plan there is for you, but generally within the industry. This can come from, again, doing your research on Google, looking at different uh, spaces or professional groups as well, but connecting with other people, some that may be your peers, counterparts, right? but then also those that are in leadership or in other spaces outside of what you're doing immediately. You have to find people that are in your space and doing something different so that you can really learn what can be useful for you in your progression. Sometimes we don't know what we can do because we haven't seen it, right? Maybe the company that you joined straight out of college doesn't have a certain job. And then you talk to other people and realize a certain job exists and you start talking with them about pay. Now, this is something big for particularly women. And this this content can be helpful for women and men, all the same, uh, whatever you identify as. However, talking about things, talking about pay is something that women are very hush hush about. We don't really talk. We don't have the conversations. We're not. We may talk about, you know, what other people are doing, but then it stops there. My challenge for anyone that is questioning what they can do about the gender pay gap is just start talking about pay and not just with women, but other men as well. Understand broadly in your space what people are actually earning for similar skills, for similar jobs, right? So this uh, this all falls under doing your research it can be online but you have to take it from online and just you know googling some stuff because we know pay scale and things like that it can be inflated deflated we don't really know you have to start talking with people you have to start talking with folks in your space and in your sectors whether that's directly in your local communities or even virtual groups so we have to get to that place and hello, welcome in. So I'm guessing everyone can hear me. Uh, hello, Teddy. Hello, Sharky. Welcome in. And Burns, Burns Junk Closet. Hello, how are you? Hope you're doing well today. All right, so that is doing your research. Let me make sure I got all of my points out there. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is interviewing and ne networking. And I put interviewing and networking in the same bucket because I do believe they are one and the same <laughs> in some aspects. So this is something that I see a bit more with women is the idea that you only interview if you're actively looking for a job. So you don't have a job, that's when you start interviewing for jobs. My challenge with that is um, be more open-minded because when you interview more often, and this is actually something that was shared with me years ago from one of my mentors, uh, she shared with me that she's always interviewing. She's always open to talking with people and that I should be the same way. And the reason for it doesn't have to be in a place of, oh, you're unhappy or you want to leave your job. However, there's information that you can learn just from being able to say yes to a call with, say, a recruiter or, um, you know, someone that is uh, hiring. You can learn what market rates are for your field. Maybe things have changed since last year, right? 
um, you can learn about a new type of job or type of work that you, again, haven't heard of a part of doing your research. But this is really more about connecting and seeing options and learning from other people. And also, when it comes that time where you maybe you're looking for something new or you need to um, find a new job or maybe, unfortunately, there's a layoff event. I've been through a layoff before. And normally what helps you is being in a space of you are actually interviewing. It helps you because you're constantly in that mode of being able to talk about yourself, talk about the skills that you have, and you're also knowledgeable. You know what companies are looking for because you have been interviewing. You already know. You may already have connections within a certain space. So I challenge, especially again, women, this this can go for anyone, but what I've seen generally with men, they've been open to having the conversation, understanding, okay, what, what are you looking for? Just open to having a discussion in case the opportunity seems like a better one, right? Than where they're in and being willing to make that jump. Another challenging thing is being able to make the jump when it's time to leave, knowing when you've gotten stagnant in a job or you've gotten really comfortable, it may be time to try something different and new, right? And sometimes you just don't know, you don't realize it until you've been open to just, you know, networking and interviewing with, you know, with different people within different spaces. And you may realize, oh my goodness, this is what I've been looking for or I can use these skills I've gained over here and do this new thing. And typically when you move jobs, you're gonna get a pay increase, right? <laughs> Most people are not moving jobs for you know, to make less. I'll just be, keep it like that. So not being afraid to change and make that shift. That's something I had to learn earlier on in my career. Seeing that stagnation, like, oh, I okay, I need to change. I need to do something else. Now, this does not always mean you need to leave your company or leave the organization that you're with. This could easily mean moving within a different department or moving into a different role. Always be interviewing, networking, talking to people. Now, as a part of that point, this is going to go back to women as well. We need to also interview within our companies in a way. And what I mean by that is using the people that you know, using your managers, using your HR representatives or business partners and having conversations with them, letting them know what you're open to. Some things that I've heard when considering women is, oh, I don't know if uh, this person is ready for that. Oh, this woman, she has kids. I don't think she's willing to relocate. I don't think she's willing to, um, we have an assignment in another country. I don't know if she's willing to do that. Uh, I don't know if she's really wanting to work this schedule. Sometimes there are assumptions made because, you know, as people, we're concerned. We, we see other people's situation and there's concern. It doesn't necessarily come from a bad place, but there may be assumptions about your scenario, just because you're a woman, just because you're a mother, just because you have, I don't know, four kids, whatever is going on, or, you know, whatever they may know about you as a person, oh, this, this person doesn't want to do that. So as women in particular, I, and again, I, I think this is useful for anyone, maybe if you're a shyer person, right? But for women, you have to advocate for yourself, whether that's externally outside of the place that you're working with, at right now or internally within your company, you should be talking with your manager, having the conversations on, this is what I'm open to. This is where I see my career. This is, you know, I, I am open about this and that and having those conversations so that they know once a person knows something, those assumptions can go away. And I have seen that happen in the past where a woman is, um, either almost passed up for something because no one asked, oh, we just assume, you know, it wouldn't be interested because of this and that. So you have to speak up and find your voice. The other part of that is really talking with other people outside of your immediate group, but expanding outside of just your industry. So for example, 
HR recruiting. That's my space. I'm with my people folks. I, I love my people folks, right? However, I have had to challenge myself to branch out and talk with other groups and network with other groups. It's a bit more challenging now that we're in this virtual space, a lot of us. However, that can also help push you into new avenues and new spaces. So again, not holding yourself back just because you're staying within your you know, group of people or you're not speaking up and letting people know directly, I am interested in this. I want to become a manager as a part of my next you know, career goal. This is my plan. Let's talk about you know, what skills I need to get to this level. Having those conversations can be really helpful. Hello, cousin. Welcome. Nice to see you. Burns Junk Closet is saying she agrees. Love that. Glad you agree. And if you have tips yourself, things that you have done, things you've used, please do put them in the chat or leave a comment. You never know who it can help. It's a great way to just share advice and really help with the pay gap, right? And help others in general, even again, like this can apply to women or men. I think this is useful for anyone. But again, it comes from a place of seeing some things that women tend to not do or some discussions that women don't always have, right? All right, so that is my piece on interviewing and networking. The third piece that I want to talk about kind of ties into that. However, it's about communication, right? So we were talking about the advance and opportunities in being open to discussing that, you really have to be direct about some things and letting folks know, I'm open to travel, I want to be a manager, I'm open to working certain hours, right? Don't let people make that assumption and choice for you. Tell people, like, if there's an opportunity, I want to know about it, right? Tell me about it. <laughs> so being in that space and open, an open communication, right? saying what you want. Now, this is huge and it ties into doing your research. I have had multiple conversations with women, especially. Now, I'm not going to say it's only been women by no means, but women, especially where as a recruiter, I will ask, what are your compensation expectations for this role? And I have heard, I don't know. I haven't thought about it. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> those are not great answers. And I get it. Um, sometimes you are in a place where someone reaches out to you, me, a recruiter like me, and you just haven't thought about it. But my challenge to you is to do your research. The reason why you're researching the first bucket, interviewing and networking the second bucket, and you're including compensation within that so that you can automatically know there is no, uh, um, I don't know. You already know the range, right? The general compensation of pay in your area, in your niche, you know, uh, focus. So re recruiting, for example, and in addition to that, you also know what skills are in demand. So you can have an idea. You may not have an exact number. I think it's good to have a range, <laughs> um, but you should know what you want. And then once you know what you want, you can communicate what you want. And from there, that's where the negotiation happens. It's just, you know, what, do you, what are you looking for? You can have points on why you know, as it's needed. Again, you have to have your research, you, you have your knowledge, and it drives that discussion. But if we start with a place of, I don't know, well, how do we negotiate? <laughs> how do I get you? How do I know that you're going to be happy with whatever next move you make? How do you know that you're going to be happy, right? You have to be knowledgeable. You have to stay in a know by networking and interviewing as well. And you have to communicate that you have to communicate what you want, right? So <laughs> the other thing I wanted to talk about with communication is actually using other people to communicate for you. How does that work? So having other people communicate for you is all about gathering 
advocates. And this ties into a person that maybe doesn't want to leave their company. I love my company. I don't want to go. How do I get people that can advocate for me? Is it my manager? I oftentimes think an advocate goes beyond your manager. Maybe they were your former manager at one point. Maybe they're your mentor within the company, a peer, a leader within the company. I think you can have multiple advocates, but who are the people that can speak up and be your voice? They know what you want, right? You've had conversations with you. They've had those conversations. They know what you want. And now if they're in a room and they're discussing oh, we need someone to do X, Y, and Z. Hmm, do you have anyone you know, within the company that could do this? That person's in the room. And this is why I say leadership, because oftentimes the leadership is in the room, right? Our SVPs, our vice presidents, our executives, our heads of departments, right? Oh, I know. Sharky, Cubston, I know people that could do this. Both of them are in my, on my team. I think both of them could do it. In the past, maybe it would have only been Sharky being considered. And I'm picking on you, Sharky, because, because I see you in the chat. I'm going to read your comment in a second. Um, maybe they would have assumed in the past if you hadn't had that discussion with your advocate. Again, if they don't know, how can they speak up for you? So knowing those people, communicating with them regularly, and letting them also communicate for you for different opportunities because they're in the room where decisions may be made. So those are the points, research, interviewing, networking, communicating. Please do share if you know someone that would benefit from this information. Again, this is catered to women, but again, I'm very open. I think many people can benefit from knowing about this. I am all for the benefit of you know many people. I hope that everyone can learn from it. And if you have tips, please do leave them in the comment section. I'm gonna read some things in the chat here. Cubson says, right, branch out and learn new things. There is so much to learn from a diverse group. 100% right, Cubson. I am all for that, but it naturally is people, right? What tends to happen is we get in our, our group and this is our group. <laughs> This is what we talk to you on a day to day. So it is a challenge that you have to work with. You have to push yourself to branch out and say, I'm going to connect with one person this month outside of my team, or I'm interested in this area of the business. I want to learn about this. This is something else that um, the company where I met does really well. They actually have had discussions from leaders and they're just round tables. I think multiple companies will do this. Join those round tables because you know, you can ask questions directly from your leadership. You can learn more about their journey. And oftentimes you'll see, and I say this often, you don't have to know what you want to do long term, straight out of college or straight out of high school or whatever. A lot of times you'll learn from people and they make a zigzag. They went here, they did that, they tried this, they tried that, and then they landed to something that they really love, or maybe your interests change. Listen to those you know, conversations and you get to understand how they started, what moves they made, and also advice directly from them. So I've been, I found that very beneficial. Sharky says, yep, sometimes you have, you just have to come out and ask for what you want. If the responses isn't positive, then that's your barometer that maybe it's time to make a change because you're being glass ceiling. That's a good point. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing. When you say what you want, there's either one or two, well, one of three answers, right? No. Yes. Let's talk more about this. What can we do here? <laughs> right? <laughs> this is like a maybe somewhere in the middle. So I totally agree with that. You, you have to start and know what you want and be able to communicate it. Cubston is agreeing. <laughs> I love this comment. No shame in your game. I love it. Cubston is thinking. Let's see. I like the sound of that advocate. This is where office politics kind of comes into play. Exactly. Because we all know there's going to be plenty of conversations that are had. It's going to be plenty of conversations that are had in my company where I'm just not there. I can't speak up. So I have to, uh, you know, really rely on my manager. 
who would be an advocate for me. I would have to depend on others within my company, maybe a colleague, right? Or a, another manager to be that advocate for me. So, and, and here's the thing, I think folks sometimes get afraid, but most people want you to win. Most people want others to be happy and be successful. There's so much positivity in people. So if you give them a chance, give them the right information, they can help you. But they have to know. <laughs> they have to know in order to do that. Burn says, take advantage of classes offered via your company. This is a great tip. Oh, I wish I could pin this. Burn, can you do me a favor and make that comment once this kind of wraps up? It'll, you'll be able to comment on the video. Please leave that comment. I'd like to pin it on the video because that's a great point. Take advantage of classes offered within the company. Yes, those benefits that you have to learn, all types of benefits. Yes, yes, I love that. Uh, good advice that we're just saying. Yes, I agree. Sharky says, and I think this will round out the comments here, I had a group manager tell me, I see you more as a subject matter expert than a manager. After she left the group, I eventually was promoted to manager. So outlast those ob obstacles and move on. That's a good point too. So some, And again, this is why I say you should have multiple advocates. I have talked to people in the past where they just didn't have a great manager, right? And so they had to deal with that obstacle. Here's another thing, don't sleep on HR. Your, your human resources, like managers, business partners, build a relationship with them because they're in the spaces too where they can advocate for you. But again, they have to know what your interests are. And I've, you know, I've seen multiple times where, and also I've been in a place where I'm asking the question too, have we considered this person? Have we talked to this person? And sometimes just in the shuffle of things, managers may just forget, oh, yeah, oh, this person is on my team. I didn't even consider, especially when you're in a place where there's a manager and there's so many people within our group, right? So you do have to, you know, kind of stand out, get in front of people's faces, even if it's virtually. So get in people's faces virtually. <laughs> um, so th there's things you have to do. You have to stay on people's minds. So that's why I say communicating regularly regularly is really helpful. <laughs> Great comment, Sharky. All right. So, and uh, Vern Junk Closet is agreeing. So I am going to wrap this up. Again, if you have any comments, things that have worked for you yourself, things that you think that can help the gender pay gap, please do share it in the comments. And again, you have to research. So it's women we have to do our research. We have to know, we have to talk to other people, men and women about their jobs, about their pay. You know, what is the industry standard going online and doing research, all of that. And I don't just say only stick to online because again, I have to make this point. Things are deflated, things are inflated online. People inflate their salaries all the time, right? <laughs> so you have to talk to people within your spaces. Networking, networking, networking. I've said this so many times on the channel on YouTube, networking. And don't be afraid to interview. Even when you're not actively looking, be open to having conversations. You just never know. Be open to having conversations internally within your company for different opportunities. I have a friend, um, she's been in a company for about six years. She's moved internally. Uh, I think this is her third or fourth time and um, she's just gotten this new opportunity. So you don't always need to leave a company. So I don't want that to seem, but sometimes there are times where you outgrow and you need to move on. You wanna try something different, right? I think either option works as long as you're moving, you're learning, you're not staying stagnant. And then lastly, communicating. You know what you want, right? You validated what you want because you've talked to people, you've interviewed, you've networked with people, and now you have to communicate what you want, whether that's internally and externally. Again, thank you all for being here. Please do hit the like button if you are here. Uh, the like button is our friend. It helps share the content out with other people, and you can directly share with someone uh, that you think will benefit. 
please do. And again, leave a comment after the um, video goes up and it's posted live on my channel. And uh, my folks on LinkedIn, thank you for joining me today. Folks on Twitch, thank you for joining me today. And um, of course, my folks on YouTube, thank you all for joining me today. Have a lovely Monday afternoon. Bye.